Hello, everyone, and thank you for jumping on the webinar today. My name is Elliot. I have Peyton with me that will be going through the presentation side of this. He'll be showing you some different settings within payroll, such as bill twos, pay sheets, different things like that. Um, throughout the presentation, if you do have a question, we have a Q&A section that you can put a question in. Um, I will be in there answering those questions. We'll try to get through them as quick as possible. So if anything pops up, just go ahead and throw that in there and we'll be sure to answer it. Um, at the end of this, we will be sending out a survey. Um, so if you guys have the time, please fill that out. It's just going to ask how we did. Um, also going to have a spot where you can request different topics that you want to learn more about that we can schedule for future webinars. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Peyton. So Peyton, go for it. Fantastic. Thank you, Elliot. Thanks everyone else for jumping on. Uh, like Elliot said, we're just going to be running through some of the payroll features today. So uh, first things first, we've got our test account pulled up. We're in the payroll tab. First thing we're going to do is just go ahead and walk through linking an Arbiter pay account. Um, so this is a very basic step. Also something that's very easy for some people to miss. Um, so to do this, we're going to come in payroll and then jump here to this account sub tab. Uh, from here, if you don't have an Arbiter Pay account set up, just go ahead and click activate Arbiter Pay account. That'll walk you through the process of creating one. Once that's done, or if you already have that complete, then you'll just go ahead and click link Arbiter Pay account. From here, it'll ask for your username. We'll go ahead and punch that in. It should find our account number or account numbers. In this case, this Arbiter Pay account has multiple, so I can select whichever one I want. Uh, however, if you only have the one account number, it'll only give you that one number. So we'll go ahead and add that. It'll ask for that security key, punch that in and confirm. And now we'll see the Arbiter Pay account pop up on this page. Um, so as we can see, we got the account number balance linked bank account. Now we're all linked up and ready to go. So now as an assigner, if I was going to be paying my officials from this account, this is the first step that I would want to follow um, in order to get to that point. So now that that's done, we're going to shift gears here for just a sec and jump on over to the resources tab. And we're just going to go through adding a bill to. So bill twos are Arbiter's way of labeling who will be paying the officials for a for an event um, so on this bill twos page you're going to want to have a bill to for um, every team on your account unless you yourself um, or sorry unless you have for some reason multiple teams that would be billed to the same place so that's kind of the uses of bill twos you can tell the system who will be paying for a game. To add a bill to is super easy. We're just going to come in here and click on this green plus. Now from here, we'll be able to find any bill to in the system. Uh, we can filter by distance, postal code, and we can even search it up by name. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up one of the schools near me. We're just going to go ahead and do Mountain Ridge. So we'll do Mountain Ridge High School, search it up by name. That's the one I'm looking for. Now I'm just going to go ahead and check that box and it's added successfully. So once that's done, I can go ahead and click done. Now if I search it up by name, I should be able to find it here. If I can spell, there we go. Now we've got our bill to add it in there. So I'll show you in just a sec how these play in. Um, but bill twos are very important when it comes to really anything in payroll. Um, so that's how you add a bill to. It's not something that's very hard to do. Um, but yeah, so now we'll go ahead and jump on over to our schedule tab and I'll show you how that bill to ties in. Um, so here we have just a bunch of test games and we're going to go ahead and take a look at this game, 5427. So I'll open up the slots here. Now, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and take a look and see where that bill to, where we can find that bill to on each game. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just click the edit pencil to the left of this game. It'll bring me 
the edit game page should not be verified. Let me save that real quick. And then we can jump back in there. So edit pencil, it'll bring you to this page. To find the build to, real easy. We're just going to scroll down, come to the bottom here in this build to box. So most of the time, the build to is going to match the home team. Um, however, you know, there are different scenarios where that's not the case. I would say most commonly, build two is going to match home team. So you can check that here. You'll also have the same place to add a build to when you're creating a game. So if I come in to add, I'm going to see the exact same screen and I can add in the build to down there. Now, we're going to go over the two different scenarios. First being um, the school has arbiter pay and wants to pay these officials. Second being I as the assigner want to pay these officials. So this first official on this game has already been paid, so we can't adjust that one at all. These next two, however, let's say Duchesne High School wanted to pay for these officials and they have arbiter pay set up. There's two very key things we need to look at here. First being the bill two, which we already checked. The bill two is correct. It does match the home team. Second thing we need to look at is right here, this paid by bill to or not paid status. So what that means, paid by bill to, that means that the game is going to be going to the bill to, whoever's listed on the game as the bill to, to be paid. If it's set as not paid, it means the system is keeping this payment in your Arbiter 1 group. Uh, so only you would be able to pay that. In order to change these, there's a couple things we can do. First, we can just click on the edit pencil to the left of any position we want to change. So if I wanted to switch Elliot to paid by bill to, I can just click this edit pencil and then check off this paid by bill to box. It's that simple. I can go ahead and save it as is. And now we'll see that that's been updated to paid by bill to. Now let's say I have more than just one game that I need to update. Let's say I put in all of Duchesne High School's games, but they're all listed as not paid and I need to update them to paid by bill to. It's very simple. What we can do is we can filter to get just Duchesne's games. To do that, we're going to come over here on the right and click new. This will bring us into the add filter page. There's a lot of different things uh, that you can filter by in here. However, my personal favorite for an update such as this is to just find the team we're looking for under home team. So I'm going to go ahead and find Duchesne High School. And that's the only thing I'm going to click. That's the only um, status that I want to change. The rest of it, I'll leave it all sports, all levels, all sites, all team, all opponents. Um, however, you can do more than one filter option at a time. So if I wanted to see all games where Duchesne's the home team and, you know, Alta's the away team, I can filter for just that. However, for now, we're just going to do all games where Duchesne is the home team. Now up here, I can either click Get Results and it'll show me all the Duchesne home games um, temporarily, or if I do Save, I can name the filter and it'll keep it on my list of filters. I'll show you here in just a sec where it would save that. Um, but I'll go ahead and do just get results for now. And now we see we have all of the Duchesne home games. Now, if I'd saved this filter, it would have shown up um, in here and you would be able to select it whenever you need. However, since I did get result, this filter is going to disappear once I switch it. But now I have all these games pulled up and I need to switch them all to paid by build to. To do that, I'm just going to come over on the left and select the mass update option. And in here, there's a lot of different things we can mass update. The two we're going to be looking at is our paid by bill to and the bill to. So from here, we can change all the bill to's to either paid by bill to or not paid by bill to. So we're going to make it paid by bill to. And then for the bill to, just in case some of these have different bill twos or don't have a bill to set at all, we're just going to go ahead and select Duchesne High School. So now when we update this, it says 15 have been updated. 
Um, the rest wouldn't have been updated if they were verified, paid, or on a pay sheet. So now we know that all active games have been updated to show paid by bill to and have the accurate bill to on them. Um, so once that's done, now we know that game can be or that game will now be responsible for the school to pay. They'll be able to sign in to their Arbiter Sports account, find Elliot and David, and then go ahead and get them paid for that game. On the flip side of things, if I wanted to pay these officials, then I would want to make sure first off that that bill two is set. Um, you know, whether it's you paying or the school paying, you'll want to make sure that bill two is in place. Um, and then secondly, I'll just need to switch Elliot and David to not paid. So because I just want to do it for this game, I'm going to go ahead and just use the edit pencils and uncheck these boxes that sets them back to not paid. Then what we're going to do is in order to get these games or these payments on a pay sheet, we need to verify the game. So to do that, I'm just going to click the edit pencil to the left of the game and then come down and check off this verified box. It's that simple. For pay sheets, you just need to make sure you have them set as not paid, you have the correct bill to on the game, and that it's verified. Now once that's done, we'll go ahead and we'll start running pay sheets for these two. So to do that, we're going to come back into payroll, and we're going to drop down to pay sheets. Uh, and here, what I'm going to do is just select David and Elliot on the left, and then set in my date range in the middle. So I just want to do this month. So I'm just going to do April 1st to April 30th. Now, if I want to preview what these pay sheets are going to have on them, I can click preview by date and it'll pull it up and I can see what games are included for each official or I can do it by level gives me the same information, just formatted differently. Um, so, you know, you can make sure everything that you want to be on these pay sheets is on these pay sheets before you create them. So once I have, once I've previewed them, they look good. Um, the date, this is just gonna put on the pay sheet when this, when these pay sheets were created. So it's gonna default to the current day. If for any reason you need to change that, you can. However, for now, we're just going to leave it. Um, then over here on the right, we have the bill twos. So if I only wanted to see um, or to apply games to this pay sheet that David and Elliot worked for Duchesne, then I could specifically select, uh, sorry, select that Duchesne High School bill two. If I don't care what bill to is going on the game, um, I can just go or sorry, going on the pay sheets. I can just leave it as all bill twos, and that way any games that David or Elliot works will show up for me. So once I have my criteria set, I'm just going to go ahead and click create. It's going to ask me if I want to. I'm just going to hit OK. Um, then up here we'll see pay sheet for David Martin was successfully created and the pay sheet for Elliot Winberg was successfully created. It does tell us here that um, a pay sheet for Elliot couldn't be created. The only reason that's happening is because we have two Elliots and I selected both of them. So one had one created, one didn't. Now, if we want to look at those, super easy. We're just going to go ahead and select view slash print checks and pay sheets. So if I do this, it will pull it up for anyone that I have selected. So currently it's just David and Elliot. If I wanted to see everyone's, I could just select all and I'd be able to see everyone's. Um, so these pay sheets, as you'll see um, over here on the left are yellow. That means that they are unpaid. Another way we can tell that they're unpaid is they don't have a check number. Uh, but now that these are created, we can view them uh, just like we could preview them. So we can do it by level or by date. And as you can see, we can find that game that we have verified and everything showing up in here. Excuse me. Um, so now once we're ready to pay these, 
We're going to come over and check off these boxes on the left. And then just go ahead and select pay by arbiter pay. Once that's done, these boxes will turn white and gray, you know, according to the column that they're in, uh, row that they're in. And then here under check number, we would see arbiter pay telling us that they've been completed. Um, you won't be able to pay them again. So they'll sit in here. Um, if you switch this from unpaid to paid, you'll be able to see all the past ones that have been completed, uh, but you won't be able to double pay on any of them. So that's pay sheets. Um, they're pretty straightforward as long as you remember to verify any games that you want showing up on these pay sheets and make sure that they're showing not paid. Next thing we're going to go over is game fees. So game fees, there's two ways to set them. I'll show you first. Um, the longer way to do so, if I came in here and let's say for this game, I wanted to change this from $10 to $15. To do that, I can either click on this edit pencil and enter it here and save it which if you just have to do it for one or two, that's definitely the easiest route to take. But if I needed to change the game fees or set the game fees for a whole sport in my account, I'm not gonna wanna go through and change them like that. The best way to do it would be to come into payroll and jump into this game fees page. So in here, you can basically build out the pay schedules for each of your different really any kind of game. So each one of these is a different criteria that we can change. So if I want a specific bill to, if I want to set the prices for, you know, Alta High School, if that's going to be different than other high schools, then I can specify, okay, I'm setting the prices for Alta. Then you come over and you select your sport and level. So if I'm doing varsity, uh, boys varsity and girls varsity, let's say they're the same, why not? Um, so we'll select both of those. If you just want to select one, you can. If you want to set it for all of them at the same time, um, you know, it's really up to you how you want to build these. So let's say we'll just leave it as is. Out to high school, um, boys and girls varsity, a normal game with one official on it. This hasn't been created yet, so we'll just click create. So now we have... Alta High School, um, we have each of these different positions built out, and now we can go ahead and apply fees to them. Um, so this would be for a specific bill to, as we can see here, it's got Alta listed in all of them. However, if I just wanted to see generic, uh, you know, what every school's pricing is gonna be, I can just leave that as all, and then I'll go ahead and view. So here we can see, that we have the girls and boys varsity prices um, all already entered. Now we just need to put them in, uh, put in the actual fees. And we'll see we do have Alta and Abundant Life down here listed separately because someone created, I created the Alta one, uh, or sorry, the Alta ones. Someone else created the Abundant Life Academy ones, but these are specified to these bill twos. So if I set in, you know, $5 here and apply it, that's only going to apply to a home plate position on a girls varsity baseball game at Abundant Life Academy. If it's any other build to, it's going to be different than $5. Right now it's going to be $100. So this game fees page, anything you change up here is gonna give you a whole new sheet. So if I change this from one official to two officials, I'm gonna get a whole different sheet because now instead of one game with one official on it, I'm getting one game with two officials on it and seeing what the prices are set at. So game fees, um, there's a lot that you can do in here. And each game, you know, the amount of, of officials you have on it or whether or not it's linked. That's what this games column is. 
if I have two games that are linked and I want to change, you know, the fees for linked games, I'm going to make sure I want to change it to two. If I link them in sets of three, then I want to make sure I'll get three as well. And you can run all of them at the same time. So, you know, if I wanted to just go through and crank it all out in one sitting, I can definitely do that. Um, so game fees, if I want to apply them, very simple. I'll just check off the boxes I want to change. Let's say I want to make these 150. I'll just put in 150 and apply. It switches it to 150 for me. So now moving forward, any game that I put in, um, if it's not linked and it has two officials for a varsity boys baseball game, it's going to be $150 for the home plate position. Now let's say I already have games in the system and I want to apply these, these new fees to those games. Hitting apply does not do that. What I'll need to do is check off those same two boxes and then just go ahead and hit cascade. So what this does is this just sends the fees that you have built out to games that already exist in the system matching that criteria. So if there's a certain date range you want to apply that to, you can set that in there. Um, however, if you just want to change all slots that match those characteristics that we have built out on that game fees page, then I'll just check off all slots and hit cascade. Once that's done, It'll give you this blue little pop up saying that uh, that game for you was cascaded and then it'll tell you how many slots were updated so you can get a good idea if it applied to all the games you needed it to or not. Uh, for example, if you had 100 games in the system already that you were trying to update the game fees for, if they each had two slots on them and you cascaded and it said 50 slots are updated, you know you definitely you know, need to look at your criteria again because you didn't get all those games updated. So that's game fees. It looks very intimidating. There's a lot of different settings in here, um, but once you get the hang of it and play around with it a little bit, it is very easy uh, and it is very convenient. It saves you a lot of time. So um, I believe that is all I had for you. Elliot, am I missing anything? Maybe he hopped off. <laughs> um, let me check my notes. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that is all I had for you guys. Uh, I appreciate you all jumping on. Sorry about that. I was, I was on mute and I was trying to talk. So no, that looks great. Um, Thanks for covering all, going through all that. Um, yeah, if, if you guys have any more questions, anything you want to add in, we'll stay on for a little bit. Uh, please feel free to throw those in the chat. Um, also, while we're going through that, Peyton, if you could show them the Help Center, and we'll put that link in here so that if you guys ever run into any issues or something you want to go more in depth into, we do have a Help Center that does have a lot of helpful articles. A lot of them include videos. Um, you can use that to reference to, and we will be building that up in the next couple weeks. So, then to get there, you all have access to it. Uh, as long as you have an Arbiter Sports account, when you sign in, it'll give you your name up here. You just click on either the picture of yourself or this gray bubble next to you. Go to help, and it's that easy. It'll bring here to our help site. You can look up any question you have. So, you know, if I needed a refresher on pay sheets. I can just look up pay sheets and any related article, it'll pull up. However, this first one's named pay sheets, so that's probably the best one to go with. But um, you can search up any question you have. We should have an article on it. Um, but if not, that's where our customer support team comes in. So um, please use this. It is a great resource. Also, we will be making these webinars available on our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be sure that everybody gets the link. I'll put that in the in the chat as well. We will be having another assigner webinar in the next few weeks, uh, April 10th, or excuse me, May 10th, May 12th, and May 14th. We will be covering covering top features within Arbiter One. 
uh, look out for the pop up to come through and you'll be able to click on the links that uh, that are there and register for which ones you can attend. You can attend one, you can attend all three, totally up to you. But um, like I said, we'll go ahead and stay on for a little bit for any last minute questions. Um, I'll throw those links in the chat and then, uh, but we appreciate everybody jumping on. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, look out for those surveys coming through. Make